Hello, my lovely crystallites. How are you today? I hope you have a lovely week, and I hope you had a good beginning of your weekend, too. Well, today we're going to be talking about dealing with self-doubt. As an artist, no matter what kind you are, you'll eventually deal with self-doubt. And like I said, if you haven't yet, it's going to come. But instead of worrying about it, let's equip ourselves with the right mindset to tackle self-doubt. Understanding why self-doubt comes helps fight it, and usually it's because of the situation you're in. So here's four situations that you might be in that cause self-doubt if you're dealing with it right now. One, maybe you're under pressure to perform. Did you just join a major project or are you in a competition? Two, maybe you're just trying to give something to a customer as a commission. Three, maybe you're just an artist and you like doing it as a hobby and you're now coming up to the point where you have to ask yourself, am I going to do this for the rest of my life? And finally, four, maybe you're actually making this art into a business. Well, no matter what situation you're in, I'll be here to help walk you guys through it. Let's prepare ourselves. So, maybe you are applying for a competition and you're trying to create a beautiful masterpiece for the show. Well, let me tell you, there are only two types of competitions, okay? There's one, the one where the judges have asked you to follow a certain theme. Number two, it's where you get to draw whatever you want. Well, personally for me, the latter one, the latter choice is the hardest. But no matter which competition you sign up for, don't place your whole self-worth on the line. This is not Chopped or any other game show, okay? You don't have to say, wow, I'm going to place everything that I worked for, everything that I want to do, all my goals, everything that makes me me before someone else. And if they don't like what you do, please, please, please don't beat yourself up for it. You are unique. You have a beautiful vision and perspective that no one else in the world has. And yes, there might be people who have thought of the same things as you, but they cannot produce the same things as you. A lot of people go to museums and say, oh, I can create that white square on a wall. Yeah, maybe they can. But the reason and the purpose and the intentions and the strokes and everything that you put into your work is all you. And art is subjective. Not everyone is going to like your style of work, whether it be manga, whether it be abstract, impressionism, what if it's surreal, surrealism or pop surrealism, it doesn't matter. Don't lay your stress and your self-doubt and your self-worth before someone else to judge you. I'm not saying don't join a competition. I'm saying when you join and when you participate, understand that someone else might not like your style and that's completely okay. You are doing this for you, you're doing this for your self-growth, and I'm so proud of you. You will always be your number one fan, or at least you need to be, just as much as you are your own critic. I think as you go into competition, you have to really take care of your mindset. You have to push yourself to submit and create the best thing that you can for yourself and be happy with it. And whether you win first prize, second prize, or not a prize at all, just know that you did your very best and you've already increased your self-worth. You've increased your skills. You've increased your patience and your practice. And that's already a prize that no one can give you. That's priceless and I think it's amazing. So in that case, let your self-doubt turn into a lot of self-worth. You should harness all that pressure and that stress and turn it into something good, okay? And if you are ever or have ever been in a competition, let me know down below. Also, if you want to hear my experiences during a competition, let me know below and I'll, I'll make another video for you guys. The next situation that I talked about would be working for a commission. And now it's a little bit different because you're actually working for money and you're taking somebody else's money. And it's different like you know that person has worked really really hard to earn what they have and they're willing and want to pay you for something that's amazing well I think there are two things that you need to think about when you're about to do a commission the first thing to think about when doing commissions is one this person already likes your style 
they ask you to do a commission for them because they've seen your other work where maybe you showed them your, your portfolio and you already gave them a sense of what you can do that maybe you can create beautiful work and they were like hey I want a bit of that in my own home you are creating something to make someone else happy and that might put a little bit of pressure on you I know I get it I've done that too however number two is really important and this will help you tackle your self-doubt be clear in what you can and cannot do as an artist everyone has their limitations and I don't think that people in who is ever asking you for a commission expects you to be the best artist in the world but they do expect you to be honest and I think that's the best kind of artist you can be if you can't draw hands and feet really really well then think about it and say tell them I can't draw hands and feet really really well but if you can learn and really 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 improve it by the time that they ask for the commission which have hands and feet in it well let them know say I will do my very best to render and practice and improve my hands and feet and if I can we'll add them inside of the portrait but don't go out just laying all of the lists of things that you can't do also let them know hey I'm pretty bomb at, being, at painting hair or I'm really good at capturing the beauty of someone inside of their eyes the eyes is the window to the soul isn't it so be honest but be treat yourself fairly if you're good enough for someone to want to ask you for a commission then take pride in that but be humble <laughs> and be honest I think that's the best thing you can do in relationship with customers by the way if you ever do get a commission good job I'm so proud of you and I'm cheering for you our third situation is just dealing with self-doubt even if it's a hobby or ceiling dealing with self-doubt if you want to become an artist later on in life is this something that you want to do all of your life well if you're not performing or have an exterior motivator forcing you to use your talent don't worry about it if you just want to paint art just to paint art or you want to dance or you want to do anything else then just do it do it when you want to self-doubt is normal and you have nothing to lose if you're doubting yourself maybe you feel uninspired or you hear someone dissing your work and it's making you question yourself in that situation if your art is your hobby enjoy it as a hobby keep drawing and enjoy things like hearing your pencil scratch the paper or watching all of the dust from charcoal go on your paper if you feel uninspired practice color theory scribble those are all things that can inspire you to just keep going as well as calm yourself you don't need to show off your work just keep a sketchbook to yourself and just play play is important for children but I don't think it should stop in your childhood you can continue to play even as you grow up in terms of creating art for the rest of your life well if someone is telling you like a parent is suggesting that you do something else well Here's a project and a suggestion for you. If you're in high school and it's 9th or 10th grade and you're really thinking about college and you're thinking about where you want to go, what kind of jobs you want to do when you're older, even if you're in middle school, I suggest that you try drawing as much as you can and for the next 30 days. If you can draw for the next 30 days and continue to draw, even if you feel pressure not to, even if you don't want to draw, even if you feel uninspired and unmotivated, if you can do that without a problem, as in as you're really committed to doing it, I suggest you pursue art. But if you can't do that, then I suggest you also do something else. The reason why I'm saying that is because doing art means it's going to take a lot of work. And it's not just drawing but it's creating a discipline to work hard every day. You might have to do emails, you might have to prepare your store, but you have to be working every single day. And if you can't even draw or do something little while you have no pressure, you're not gonna be able to do it as an artist later. So just try it. Just try drawing for 30 days, creating as much as you can. It doesn't even have to be good, but just get yourself disciplined in creating art and doing and moving and doing things 
It might be new, but it'll be good for you. Also though, if you do want to be an artist or you're thinking about it, there's no reason why you can't be an artist on the side as well as be a teacher. That's what I'm doing. I'm over here editing things, but I'm also working on the side to be a teacher. I want to teach history for middle school and high schoolers. You can do both. So just give it some extra thought and also try the challenge. Finally, if you're already an artist and you're in the art business, there might be a point where you don't make any sales. You might not sell anything on your shop. You might not even get a commission, but you need to work really, really hard still because eventually your day will come. If you're improving your art always and putting your best foot forward, good things will come to you. If your art is good, someone is eventually going to like it. It's just that person. It just takes one person, I promise you. It just takes one person to like it, and that could be your customer for life. Or they could be the one that spreads about your beautiful work to other people. So if that's what you guys want to do, I suggest that you keep working and you work really, really hard to do what you love. Don't be discouraged by the things that I said. I really hope that you just become encouraged to do anything that you want to do. If it's art, then do it. Don't doubt yourself and don't lay your self-worth before other people. If you can't appreciate yourself, who can appreciate you? I know today's been a long video and it's a lot to think about. However, I really want to know what you guys think about it. Do you doubt yourself? I mean, do you treasure yourself? Treasure yourself, treasure your art, and I promise you things will work out for the best. I love you all and I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry this video is a little bit later on in the week because I'm really working hard and I'm preparing for my art show that's coming up in February. I also still have some things to prepare for and some pictures and paintings that I need to finish. So if you guys are interested in any of that or just following the process, you can follow me on my Instagram or any of my social medias that will be in the description box below. Also, if you want to support me in any way, you can check out my Etsy shop, which will also be in the description box. If you guys have anything that you want to say to me to help me improve my YouTube channel, or you just want to know more about me, have any questions, hit me up in the comments section and I'll make sure to either make a video about it or reply to your comments. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support, and I hope you have a wonderful, 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 wonderful weekend and another good week. See you guys next time. Ciao!